Resident Evil is one of the most famous video games of all time, and with that comes a ton of memorable villains. So many in fact I couldn't do my usual from worst to best rankings, so I shortened it down to the 10 best Resident Evil villains. Cease your pointless struggling. Abandon your body to the will of our God. You're a shitty missionary. You know that. Chief Patoras Mendez is a character I didn't really care about. In Resident Evil 4, he was just a big scary guy there for Leon to kill. But in Resident Evil 4 Remake, we learn a ton more about him. To summarize, he was a man that deeply loved his village, taking the time to know every single individual member. He even kept a journal documenting every single little thing that happened. In a time of desperation, he allowed himself to be tricked and manipulated by Osman Sadler, having all the people he cared about and himself infected with the last plague us parasite, being made to preach about the very thing that destroyed his village. If you haven't yet, you really should read the files about Chief Mendez in Resident Evil 4 Remake. They made me honestly feel bad about killing him. Now, let's take a look at him. Well, well, Ethan Winters. Resident Evil Village is full of amazing villains. Not you. But there's just one that's way more popular than the rest. I'm talking about none other than Alicina Dimitrescu. She broke the internet when Resident Evil Village came out. Cause yes, goth mommy, step on me please. I never really understood that part. To me, she is just very unique compared to every other Resident Evil villain. And is my second favorite villain from Resident Evil 8. You think I didn't know you were coming? This is my life's work! I'm not handing over anything! We have our orders, Dr. Birkin. Next we have William Birkin. William Birkin dedicated his life to Umbrella, being involved in manufacturing the T-Virus and experimenting on Lisa Trevor, but eventually he manufactured his greatest creation, the G-Virus. But feeling like Umbrella isn't going to give him the credit he deserves, plans to steal it and sell G. Umbrella finds out what he's about to do and sends the strike team to recover G, neutralizing Dr. Birkin in the process. Dying Birkin uses his last bit of life to inject himself with G, killing the strike team and releasing G into the sewers. This is where we meet him in the game. You watch his brutal, painful transition into the monster he created, till there's nothing left of the man, William Birkin. I love Birkin because he has that old-fashioned mad scientist horror villain energy. Let's see what you have. Ethan Winters. Okay, next we have Heisenberg. Heisenberg's one of the more underrated villains in Resident Evil. Lady Dimitres took a lot of eyes off him, but this guy is such a fun villain. I'm always smiling every time he's on screen. Shut your fucking hole! Sorry about that. He's so charismatic. And he actually has similar goals to Ethan. He wants to kill Mother Miranda as well, but he wants to use Ethan's daughter to do it. I can't help but to think of an alternate universe where Ethan agreed to work with Heisenberg. But instead, we got one of the worst boss fights in the game. While we're here, hello everybody, my name is Volske. I'm working as hard as I can to make the best Resident Evil videos possible. And if you're enjoying this video, do a Chris Redfield boulder punch on the like button. Every single one helps me a lot. I have been honored with the prodigious power from the great Lord Sadler. I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. Talazar is the perfect villain for Resident Evil 4. You spend most of the game going through his goofy ass castle, and most of Leon's goofiest lines are directed towards this little shit. I let our miserable insects out for some exercise down in the sewer. Thanks. That should keep me company, cause boredom kills me. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Sally Day neutered the Goofy factor in Resident Evil 4 Remake. That doesn't mean he's bad though. Again, I really recommend reading the notes left around in Resident Evil 4 Remake to get his backstory. <laughs> Dad, right? You mind if I uh, borrow Bobby for a little bit? Why don't you stand there? Do something! Ethan, help! Lucas Baker is one of the most horrifying Resident Evil villains, just cause he is truly psychotic. In Resident Evil, you're usually fighting giant monsters and evil world-ending threats, but Lucas Baker just enjoys torturing people. He is like the jigsaw of the Resident Evil universe, putting Ethan and Clancy through hell. Even if he wasn't infected by the mold, he would still be one of the scariest Resident Evil villains. Ah uh, yes, the time has come for this lamb to join our covenant. Oh, blessings unto him and the sweet mercy they bring. Exalt all 
and let it be so. Honestly, I prefer Sadler in the Resident Evil 4 remake. He honestly thinks the world would be better if it was under his control. And he doesn't understand and is offended by Leon rejecting his gift. I absolutely love how his presence is always felt. With Leon and Ashley able to hear the orders he gives you to Ganado, or the part where he literally takes over Ashley's body and makes her hold herself hostage. Not to say I hate the version from the original. He is responsible for some of the goofiest and most memorable lines in the original. Don't tell me you've never swatted a bothersome fly. In essence, it's the same thing. What did you say? Insects' life doesn't compare to human lives. No matter which version you prefer, Sadler is an amazing villain. Welcome to the family, son. <laughs> Jack Baker is a fun yet tragic villain. He was a good man just trying to do right by everyone. And one day he found a little girl who he thought was hurt in a storm, who ended up being a bioweapon and infecting him and his whole family, driving them insane. Jack is somehow so fun yet so scary. He just seems like he's always having such a great time. And is easily the best part of Resident Evil 7. Long time no see, rookie. Major Krauser? What the hell? Why? If there's one thing I love in media, it's a dark reflection of the main character. Characters such as Darth Vader. Red Hood, and of course, Jack Krauser. Both Leon and Krauser have a traumatic past dealing with bioweapons. But while Leon dedicated his life to fight them, Krauser believes it's the only way to get true power. The writers having Krauser be Leon's mentor was an amazing choice. He forces Leon to confront his past and his morals. I wish I could go into detail more, but I don't want this video to be four hours long. There's a really good character study by someone called Fat Brett. I really recommend you go give that video a watch. I'll put a link in the description. Boroboros will be released into the atmosphere. Ensuring complete global saturation. Honestly, who else can be number one other than Albert Wesker? He is involved in almost every Resident Evil game in one way or another. He's kind of like the Darth Vader of the Resident Evil universe. He very rarely shows up himself, but when he does, you know shit's gonna go down. He's so badass, he wears sunglasses indoors at night. And he's one of the few Resident Evil characters who have confirmed done the reproductive act. Sigma male shit. And he can't forget the fact that he gets all of his ideas from comic book villains. Okay, obviously I'm taking the piss a little bit. Wesker is genuinely my favorite video game villain of all time. And he is the only reason I want a Resident Evil 5 remake. Well, other than seeing the boulder punch in beautiful 4K. <laughs> But that's the end of my video. If you enjoyed, please drop a like, it really helps me in the algorithm. And I'd love to see your rankings in the comment section below. I love reading through other people's takes. But yeah, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in a minute.